We're in Farmington, New York. We are at Finger Lakes Gaming and Racetrack for the Vision Kia Easter Nationals. This is round eight and nine. The weather here is beyond words. We went from 50 degrees and sunny. The track is melting and taking it down literally as we watch it, it's going away. Then the rain comes, not just rain, monsoon rain with winds. Continuous winds of 30 to 40 miles an hour with 60 mile an hour gusts. It's going to be brutal out there, no doubt about it. The visibility, very, very difficult. These drivers not only having a hard time seeing the snowmobiles and the drivers ahead of them, but reading the definitions of the racetrack. Yeah, the track this weekend in New York is really tight. Uh, they try their best to make some snow, but it's still, it's pretty good, but it's really small, like a little bit bigger than Detroit, and the lab traffic, you get into lab traffic really fast. You always kind of want to keep your front end down. Uh, just in case the wind does gust because it does catch and kind of parachutes and uh, once it does that it's hard to save so you always keep that front end down and kind of cut through the air instead of having it up. We got some wind and rain and all that kind of thing but uh, we are at least we're racing. So Johan Liedman came from Sweden, came back over here. When he was in Sweden, he was a rock star, superstar, winning races, championships, everything was good. Came back over here with Sport Tech Racing, Chris Carlson. They brought him over here last year. He, he had, had a decent year. What happened now is they're switching snowmobiles. This year they're riding Polaris. There's growing pains. It has been up and down. So I got a, I got a fourth place in Duluth on the first race, and I was really happy about that. I was, I was close to the podium. You know, it's interesting, all of the European drivers that come over and think that they're going to come over to the United States and they're going to set snowcross racing on fire. Wrong. You know, they've got their hands full. You're looking at some of the best of the best in the United States here that are snowcross racing. It's tough out there. I mean, everybody wants to win and everybody wants to get by. I, I just hope that I can, I can get a podium at least this year to just prove that I'm, I'm one of the top guys. The top guys are, are very tight and it seemed like Tucker and Ross and Tim or Robbie is, is just changing positions like all the time. They are so fast and they've been in this sport for so long and I think I have a lot to learn from those guys and I'm trying to see what they're doing. This is what I want to do and I have probably eight to ten more years to do this so I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to be the best on cross racer in the world. Now we get into Finger Lakes Casino here and I walk up and down Pitt Road and I see all the trailers here, all the big teams here except one. Number 68, Tucker Hibbert. Not here. Unfortunately, due to the fact that this event was rescheduled. This is a weekend that we were supposed to be off. Tucker was gonna go over, come back, make it back to Fargo, and be at all the events. Tucker made the decision to go to Russia. That's a decision that he made. I hear a lot of people saying the other riders, oh, this is great for them because Tucker's not here. Now they can win, right? Wrong. They've been beating up on Tucker all year. They proved he's beatable. They've taken turns on the podium. He's got to stay here if he wants the championship. So from their standpoint, a racer's perspective, they want him here. They want to prove to themselves as part of their pride, he's beatable and I beat him. I don't want him to not be here when I win and say, oh, you won because Tucker wasn't there. I, I wanted to beat him like straight, like fair, fairly like this year, just like uh, every race, I wish he would be here. I was super surprised that he even went. Well, it's probably a cool race, and yeah, it'd be cool to go, but at the same time, we have a battle. With, you know, there's four of us in the points race. He's not, he's not getting any points this weekend, and we've got two finals to run this weekend. I guess whatever he wants to do, he's gonna do. We got four guys. Like I say, after this weekend, it'll probably be down to three. I guess it's just gonna be easier for me. Next on the Amsoil Championship Snowcross Series, the pros gear up for the next round of racing in Farmington, New York.
The Amsoil Championship Snowcross Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics, by Polaris, terrain domination, and by Traxxas, the fastest name in radio control. Round one of qualifying. Ross Martin and Tim Tremblay square off in their first race of the weekend. At the tabletop, Tremblay and Martin battle for first. Suddenly, Martin runs into Tremblay. Unfazed, the number 11 Skidoo takes the win. Back at the Warner trailer, the crew begins to repair Tremblay's sled. It went pretty good, but he got hit in the corner pretty hard. I got T-bone really bad, Ross Martin did. I don't know what was going on, but he just came in hot and uh, never hit off. So <laughs> my sled was pretty, the tunnel was bent and something was broke like uh, on the brake stuff. So I couldn't go really fast, but I kept like uh, medium speed the whole race and I still won the race. He won that heat, but it was pretty tough. It was pretty banged up like on one side, so he got lucky on that. The Pro Open Final. 15 riders pull up to the line for their chance at podium glory. As the light goes green, Robbie Malinowski, Zach Patton, and Ross Martin scream through the first turn. Patton takes the early lead, followed by Malinowski, Bobby LePage, and Tim Tremblay. Malinowski moves into the lead. Lap one, LePage and Patton battle for second. LePage moves into second. Lap four, Tremblay pressures Patton for third. <laughs> Meanwhile in back, Ross Martin struggles to keep up. Lap five, Tim Tremblay moves past Patton for third. Points leader Martin battles with Darren Mees for sixth. Race leader Malinowski prepares to enter into lap traffic. Tremblay and LePage battle for second. Lap 11, Tremblay passes LePage for second. Tremblay enters lap traffic. In turn four, Ross Martin suffers mechanical failures, forcing the current points leader into last place and possibly jeopardizing his championship points lead. Meanwhile up front, Malinowski continues leading the pack with a hungry Tremblay closing in fast. Yep. 
Suddenly, a crash between Kyle Palin and Cody Thompson creates a new obstacle in turn four. Lap 20, a two-man race begins for first. Tremblay advances on race leader Malinowski. Malinowski bumps into another rider, forcing Tremblay to weave through the pileup. Lap 22, Tremblay screams through the tabletop with much distance to cover in order to reach Malinowski. With one lap to go, Tremblay moves close behind the race leader. At the checkered flag, Robbie Malinowski takes the win, followed by Tim Tremblay in second and Zach Patton in third. Uh, I was able to make a pass and once I was out front, I was kind of clear sailing until I got into lappers and it happened right away, man. We were into lappers real quick. It was kind of like survival. Next on the Amsoil Championship Snowcross Series, rider Johan Lidman readies himself for day two in New York. We come in last night and Ross Martin holds a 12 point lead. He qualifies, I believe, eighth and doesn't even finish the final. He takes last place. He has a problem. Talk about a point swing. Now we've got a points battle that nobody could ever have imagined at the midpoint here. Going into March Madness, we're going to go back to back to back the last three rounds. Ten points separate three drivers. New points leader, Tim Tremblay. Last night, Tim Tremblay made up 22 points. He went from being 12 points down to nine points in the lead. Uh, the points right now, I moved from second to first yesterday, so uh, really happy of it. Today we're going to wear the red plate. Hopefully I'll be able to keep that one for the rest of the year. Second place used to be the first place rider of Ross Martin. He's nine points behind. Uh, the racing so far this weekend hasn't been the best for me. Ended up not really finishing the final. Broke my shock because of contact with another rider. And uh, hopefully we can turn that around today and get some better luck. One point behind second place Ross Martin is Robbie Malinowski. You know, hats off to him. I mean, he's, he's just so self-disciplined and, and that's so cool to see and it's refreshing. Just need to get a good start and hopefully repeat what I did yesterday. You could never have imagined this would happen. We've got six more races to go. This kind of stuff happens at the end of the year. We go into Geneva and say, hey, wow, they're only 20 points apart. Anything can happen. We're midpoint. Anything can happen. Does it get any better? It could. Inside the Carlson Motorsports trailer, number 52 Swedish rider Johan Lidman readies himself for the second qualifying race of the evening. Full shot. Johan takes over third at the tabletop. Another wide turn with Lidman in last place.
Lidman's difficulties in qualifying now puts him in the second row of the Pro Open final. I was, I was good on the light, but I got tangled up, so it, I just had to let off. The first heat now was, was all groomed and it was smooth and they, like, it didn't have any berms in the corner, so it's really hard to, like, to find good lines when there is no line. Next on the Amsoil Championship Snowcross Series, the Pro Open Final. The Amsoil Championship Snowcross Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. By Skidoo, better rides, better riders. By FXR, performance inspired. And by Articat. Share our passion. Round nine, the Pro Open final. 15 riders pull up to the line for their final shot at victory. For Ross Martin, a mechanical failure in round eight forced the season's point leader to fall back into second. Can number 837 return as the points leader tonight? As for Robbie Malinowski, can the win last night give the rider the momentum he needs to make it to the top of the box? And for current points leader, number 11, Tim Tremblay, can the French Canadian defend his number one plate for the first time? As the light goes green, number 62, Corey Thompson grabs the whole shot and the early lead. Tim Tremblay crashes in the first turn and is now in last place. <laughs> Meanwhile, up front, Robbie Malinowski and Ross Martin battle for second. Martin moves past Malinowski for second. Lap nine. Martin pressures Thompson for the lead. Malinowski forges ahead in third. Martin and Thompson go bar to bar for first. Martin moves ahead of Thompson and takes the lead. Meanwhile, Tremblay surges back from last to seven. Lap 12, Malinowski begins stalking second place Thompson. Malinowski muscles past Thompson and is now in second. Lap 18, Tim Tremblay advances on fifth place Darren Knees. Knees wrecks, allowing Tremblay to advance into fifth. Tremblay passes Bobby LePage for fourth. Thompson continues riding in third with an eager Tremblay on his heels. One lap to go. Martin crosses the checkered flag and takes the win, followed by Malinowski in second. With half a lap remaining, Tim Tremblay screams past Thompson, capturing third.
final went good. I got off to a pretty good start and I uh, just kind of took my time and waited to find the right spot to pass for the lead. I learned a little from yesterday, you know. It's hard to wait, but at the same time, it's something you have to do is just kind of be patient and wait for the right time to make the pass. I should have had that. It was in my hand. We, I don't want second. Ross doesn't want second. Tim doesn't want second. Nobody out there wants second. Hats off to Ross, though. He rode well. You know, I'm not trying to take anything away from him. I'm just showing a little frustration, and I'm just, I'm bummed out. Yeah, I had a bad start. Somebody cut my line, and then one side was and then tipped over. And then in that crash, I bent my end of bar, so it was all down on the left side. It was not a great weekend, but it was not too bad for what happened today. It's so late in the season and we have so much racing left to go. A lot can happen and we kind of just take it race by race, do our best, and at the end, see what happens.